1965, Robert Hooke built a microscope to look at tiny objects. He discovered cells after observing a thin piece of cork under a microscope. In the year 1839, Theodore Schwann showed that all animal tissues made of cells. With plant biologist Matthew Schleden, Schwann identified cell components such as membranes and a nucleus common to many eukaryotic cells. In 1855, Rudolf Virchow published a theory stating that all cells come from another cells. He explained, where a cell exists, there must have been a pre-existing cell. In 1945, Keith R. Porter, Albert Claude, and Ernest F. Fulham published the first electron micrograph of a cell. Small organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus are visible for the first time. In 1971, Lynn Margulis proposed the endosymbiotic theory of the origins of cell organelles. This theory states that chloroplasts and mitochondria in eukaryotes evolved from prokaryotes. In the year 2004, Richard Axel and Linda Buck earned the Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology for their discovery of how olfactory cells detect odors and how the brain processes information to provide a sense of smell. All living things are made up of one or more cells. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function in organisms. All cells arise from existing cells. Not all cells are alike. Even cells within the same organism show enormous diversity in size, shape, and internal organization. A few types of cells are large enough to be seen by the unaided eye. The human egg is the largest cell in the body and can be seen without the aid of a microscope. Most cells are small for two main reasons. One, the cell's nucleus can only control a certain volume of active cytoplasm. And second, cells are limited in size by the surface area to volume ratio. Cells come in a variety of shapes depending on their function. The neurons from your toes to your head are long and thin. Blood cells are on the discs so they can flow smoothly. Organisms whose cells normally contain a nucleus is called eukaryotes. Those organisms whose cells lack a nucleus and have no membrane-bound organelles are known as prokaryotes. The structures that make up a eukaryotic cell are determined by the specific functions carried out by the cell. Thus, there is no typical eukaryotic cell. Nevertheless, eukaryotic cells generally have three main components, a cell membrane, a nucleus, and a variety of other organelles. Cell membrane. A cell cannot survive if it is totally isolated from its environment. The cell membrane is a complex barrier separating every cell from its external environment. The cell membrane is a fluid mosaic of proteins floating in a phospholipid bilayer. Only certain substances can pass through the lipid bilayer. A variety of protein molecules are embedded in the basic phospholipid bilayer. Some proteins are attached to the surface of the cell membrane on both the internal and external surface. This may be hormone receptors, enzymes, or cell recognition proteins. Other proteins are embedded in the phospholipid bilayer itself. These are often associated with transporting molecules from one side of the membrane to the other and are referred to as carrier proteins. Some of these form channels or pores through which certain substances can pass. This is called facilitated diffusion. 
Others bind to a substance on one side of the membrane and carry it to the other side of the membrane. That's called active transport. Cytoplasm. Everything within the cell membrane, which is not in the nucleus, is known as the cytoplasm. Cytosol is a jelly-like mixture in which the other organelles are suspended, so cytosol plus organelles is equal to cytoplasm. Nucleus. The nucleus is normally the largest organelle within the eukaryotic cell, but it is not the brain of the cell. Prokaryotes have no nucleus, having a nuclear body instead. The nucleus contains the cell's chromosomes, which are normally uncoiled to form a chromatinic network which contain both linear DNA and proteins known as histones. These proteins coil up at the start of nuclear division when the chromosomes first became visible. Mitochondria Mitochondria are found scattered throughout the cytosol and are relatively large organelles, second only to the nucleus and chloroplasts. Mitochondria are the sites of aerobic respiration in which energy from organic compound is transferred to ATP. For this reason, they are sometimes called to as the powerhouse of the cell. ATP is the molecule that most cells use as their main energy currency. Mitochondria are more numerous in cells that have a high energy requirement. Our muscle cells contain a large number of mitochondria as do liver, heart, and sperm cells. Mitochondria have their own DNA and new mitochondria arise only when existing ones grow and divide. They are the semi-autonomous organelles. Ribosomes Unlike most other organelles, ribosomes are not surrounded by a membrane. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis in a cell. They are the most common organelles in almost all cells. Some are free in the cytoplasm and others line in the membranes of rough endoplasmic reticulum.